we, what we want to do is to actually demonstrate, we'll put the mask on you with a good seal, and we want you to try and breathe into it and see, and see if actually you can feel like you can breathe, if any air moves. All right? And, and um, do, do you want to turn the oxygen on? Or? Yeah, it's flowing right now. It's flowing right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. We're about good. seven liters. We got about flowing. seven liters. Okay, all right. All right, so the question is, can a patient breathe through a bag valve mask? Here to test it out is Valen, our stellar med student. We're going to create a good seal here. Nice C. And it's enough. Yep. Okay, so you're not, you're not going to bag for her. You're not going to bag, and we're just yep. going to have her breathe in and out normally. If I'm not bagging, I'm just going to go ahead and do a two-hand. Yeah, do sure a two-hand really seal. seal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Looks like she's having no problem whatsoever, though. We got yeah. a thumbs up. Get one more breath. Is yeah. this where the air is moving? Well, put, put a P-valve on there, and then let's see what she does. Let's see if that makes any difference on, on her ability to breathe there. Okay, you ready? All right, same thing. So get that nice seal, and again, since I'm not actually bagging, we're just going to go two-hand. It's a more reliable seal. And you can hear it coming out that same hole right through the P-valve yeah. there. It sounds like the expiratory pressure is a little bit higher. Yeah. It's a little bit slower. Yeah. So she's getting a little peep on there. But but she's easily moving air yeah. in in and out um, with the bag. How did that compare? Same. Just a little or? bit more hard to read out. Okay. 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 Let's see if you can overwhelm this one. We just put it at 15 liters. So again, and this, yep. is not an ex this is not something that happens so often that you're going to be, you know, it's intubating a, a patient that's that, you know, hypoxic, that that's right. very hungry. But this is my one caveat and my one, using the, the one problem that I have with using this for pre-oxygenation pre is, again, if I'm supplying 15 liters into this bag and my patient is air hungry, and they are breathing more than 1,500 uh, or than the, that 15 liters per minute. Which, again, if you breathe 32 times a minute out of total volume of 500, you're at 1,600 already. So you're over that you know, 15 liter per minute volume. Yeah, you're just collapsing. Now I'm not delivering 100% oxygen because I'm, I'm delivering 15 liters per minute of pure oxygen and that is mixed in with whatever room air goes into the bag. Right. And then I'm also, when I'm exhaling, rebreathing CO2 into the mask. Yeah. Now the CO2 will not go into the bag because there's a one-way yeah. valve. I think the literature does say there's a little bounce in uh, CO2, but not, not anything significant. But the literature does uh, seem to suggest that this is actually a better pre oxygenation tool than, than this. Yeah. But, what, but, but I want to go back to this. I, wanna, I want you now to breathe this is at 15 liters a minute i'm going to crank this up and i want to see if you can actually empty the bag let's let's imagine let's imagine that you're air hunger you're breathing 30 40 times a minute and uh we're trying to pre oxygenate you as we're getting ready to innovate you um let's see if you can overwhelm this bag okay so start breathing hyperventilate there okay See, the bag is basically collapsing. He's overwhelming, he's overwhelming that system. But if I take this thing and crank it up, I'm going to just crank it up here to, to 50 or 60, whatever our end point is. All right, now, yeah. Yeah. And so, you can't feel it, but I can. At that liter flow with the P valve, I'm actually feeling some pressure at the end of, that, of each breath. So it's not only just leader flow, it's also providing some positive pressure. Some positive pressure. You know, through the, the you know, through the, through the valve. Um, okay. So I agree that this is a better device. Uh, there's other advantages other than, than that. The other advantages are that, you know, you don't know what 
uh, the administration of you know sedatives are is going to do to the patient. If you give ketamine rapidly, they can become a, uh, apneic, and you want to be able to immediately start taking over ventilations for that patient. Um, there's also uh, the point that the patient may deteriorate, and you may need to immediately t uh, take, an, t uh, take over ventilations for the patient. You also get feedback, you know, as to how well the patient is, you know, breathing and moving air. Yeah, so you have to have an excellent seal uh, on demand. You know, it's called non rebreather because you have this reservoir, which again, you fill with oxygen, right? right. Uh, has a one-way valve so that oxygen goes from the reservoir into the mask. Right. And, and if you take a deep breath, this disc will seal so that there's not a lot of room air going into the mask. Yeah, but the other but side. But you still have another side that does let air in. And that's a safety mechanism because if I don't hook up this, this up to oxygen and I have no oxygen going into the mask, if I have a true non-rebreather, right, if I have, you know, discs on both sides, then I'm actually rebreathing CO2. So right. you, you don't want to do that if, you know, you lose your oxygen supply, if, if, you know, somebody steps on the line. So it's a safety mechanism, but it's not a true non-rebreather. You know, and everybody knows the scenario, you have a patient that's really, really air hungry, right? They're, they're, they're incredibly short of breath. Uh, you put a non-rebreather on them, you know, at 15 liters a minute. And I don't know if you can yeah. hook that up for me. Up to 15 liters, there we go. Okay, and so I'm gonna fill up the reservoir, right? And so, at a normal rate of breathing, I take a breath, and I collapse the bag a little bit, but the, the bag is always inflated, so there's always a reservoir of high concentrations of oxygen inside the bag and the mask. Yeah. However, what can happen is I can overwhelm this, right? Okay, if let's I, if overwhelm my, it. Go ahead, so, do it. <laughs> Look at that. So now, if I am the patient and I am really, really short of breath and I am breathing at a minute volume that's higher than 15 liters per minute, which is the flow in here, I'm overwhelming the system. And of course, I'm not going to want to keep this on my face. Yeah. You know, I'm going to try to hold this up like this or yeah. get rid of it completely. The reality is that you're, you're asphyxiating them because the flow in is less than the flow out. Okay, let's you're, do this. Okay. I'm going to crank this way up. See if you can overwhelm the mass this time. Okay. Here goes. You're not emptying that bag. I think what you just demonstrated with that mask was by cranking that up to 50, 60, whatever it is there, you didn't overwhelm the amount of oxygen that was yeah, coming so, in. Yeah, so again, if the patient is hypoxic or they're air hungry, your supply of oxygen has to outweigh their demand. Right. The, the minute vo or the volume that you, uh, the liter flow that you deliver through this ha has to outweigh their minute volume. Yeah. Okay.